Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Basically, we're here at Camera Store uh, Showroom with Yuho from Camera Rescue going through the top 10 cameras of 2019. Um, number five was the Leica M3. If you want to find the article in the video, I'll leave the link below to the Camera Store article with all the options and alternatives. But we just decided to make a video on, you know, why the M3 might have been the top five and what other options could be good for people maybe in the budget or in a similar line yeah i mean uh, surprisingly the m3 even though it's the most iconic leica m body wasn't the most clicked or searched leica m body the one that uh, one is uh, coming a different later. one a different one but uh, what uh, is special about this m3 is obviously it was the first leica m3 or leica m series uh, mm -hmm. Uh, thing from 1950s uh, and then it has a uh, frame lines and uh, magnification that's like optimized for yeah it's the biggest so far so they yeah. never replicated the same rangefinder uh, separation basically it's I think 0 0.91 yeah if I'm not wrong and it was made with a 50 90 and 135 frame lines yeah. which at the time used to be optimal yeah but a lot of people didn't like that most people probably shooting uh you know news and press wanted to have the 35 so after mm -hmm. that they made the goggles yeah the which, 35 at that time came with goggles to make it wider yeah so you could see a little bit more but if you're looking for the most classic iconic leica it's the m5 you can yeah. recognize it with a little frame little windows around yeah the m3 has this like little windows and then um but i mean you should like the 50 millimeter or longer lenses if yeah. you want an m3 if you really like basically when you're getting into like a cameras some of the main questions are light meter yes or no what lenses you're going to shoot and yeah. what you know frame lines you want on your camera if you're passionate about 50 millimeters the like m3 should be in your collection yeah if you're collecting yeah. <laughs> or you can afford to have more than one but do remember that it focuses only to one meter, which yep. at the time was the minimum. But then the future lenses came with 0 0.7 meters, which it can be modified, but usually by proper service. Yep. But most of them are zero, uh, one meter. Something like the Noctic looks is one meter only because of 0 0.95. Yep. But then they came out with the M2, which to a lot of people back then was a budget uh version of the m3 it lost the automatic frame counter it lost uh you know the magnification of 091 it did win the 35 frame lines and uh it was 35 50 90 and um it to me it's the best m3 is an m2 because i'm a 35 millimeter shooter and when yeah. i want a 50 it's also very nice it's also very nice and it's cheaper mm -hmm. usually it's uh, a cheaper option to the m3 um, then, as the other Leicas discussed in this series I have a bit different uh, uh, characteristics, we wanted to showcase the options uh, that do not have a light meter mm -hmm. and um, it's an alternative video. So here are alternatives that are essentially uh, cheaper and uh, like with a 50 millimeter, I think in, in mo most cases you get the same quality especially if you shoot black and white yeah if you can mount a like a lens either thread mount or m um, mount you should be getting the same at the end an m3 is a great camera but it's a black box so the m2 should do exactly the same one thing to note is even though they said it was built cheaper we're in 2020 and the m2s are just as good or available as the m3s which means that they probably were not done that badly uh, it does have you know that fame but then you can go with Leica thread mount, which are previous to the M mount, but still solid performers, much smaller. You can see here that basically this M3 is like, like a 30% bigger and yep. chunkier. The LTMs are great shooters. They're small, very pocketable. Usually can have the retractable lenses, like the 50 millimeters and the Ector lenses and all that. And they can make, you know, even Voilander had lenses for them, which yep. is very nice because it's even more budget friendly. Yep. And uh, then there's options also outside of Leica. There is Canon. Uh, Canon, we the, the best models are the 7 and the P. Obviously, we have a Canon 
I don't know. This LTM. Is LTM. Like they are all LTM, but uh, like this is an er earlier model, um, and those are really nice options, especially maybe from Japan. They're the only thing that in Japan is clearly cheaper than uh, the rest of the world uh, mm -hmm. uh, are the sevens and the Canon P. So so th those are really if you find a serviced one uh, you can also enjoy the canon 50 millimeter lenses which are mm -hmm. really nice they have the 1.8 that's super small um and uh 1.4 yeah 1.4 1.2 and then you can even mount the 0 0.95 on those the which, dream the dream lens which yeah. you can't mount on a leica m unless it's modified mm -hmm. another thing to note and we don't have them here is the nikon had their own um you know range finders back in the day a lot yeah. of people don't remember that but the nikon s line yeah we have the s2 just a moment. s3 uh line which they have a different mount but you can still buy lenses from boylander also and those nikon s's are fairly nice to shoot they're range finders and they basically still have you even have the modern version of the s3 millennium i think yeah which is a very premium camera but still very nice focusing is done through this little wheel here you could also focus on the lens only which is nice and yeah don't forget nikons as options to range finders i mean yeah i mean if you are looking for a non uh, light meter range finder then the lenses are much cheaper the bodies are much cheaper and yeah again you need a good copy uh, yeah. but you can be the alternative guy, you know? Yeah, but anything that's 70 years old, you need a good copy with, yeah. that has been serviced. And as a la final one, uh, curious, curiosity, we have a Leotax. Uh, w there was quite a lot of Leica copies uh, from around the world. Leotax came from Japan and it's like, it's really good. Yeah, basically when you, the rangefinders were a thing, they were mostly either screw mount and that sort of uh, timeline, there was a lot. There was Canons, there was Leotax, there's Zorkis, two are very budget friendly cameras. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for an M3, usually you won't take less than a Leica, but these are alternative options for less money. Do remember too that you can have the M4, yeah. which is also on the list of the top 10. Uh, the M4 would have, you know, the easy loading and all those benefits, but it won't have that 0 0.91. And yep. of course, if you're going for the, you know, if you have a Leica camera and you want to have the classic, classic, the M3 should be always the second option. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, just like the M4 uh, video has a nice uh, uh, look into uh, alternatives. If you, alternatives that are much cheaper if you're looking for 35 or 45 uh range uh, in 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 rangefinder cameras yeah. yeah and then uh, then the last video we have uh, the last there's still one more leica on the list which we'll leave for the release but yeah if you want to check the article and skip ahead the uh, waiting to know which one it is you can go to camera stores blog we also made a video going over the top 10 you know kind of fast this was more a slow down of what could be options to the hyped cameras with usually higher prices uh here at camera store so yeah thanks for watching guys if you have any comments below if you love or hate the m3 let us know uh, we would be you know glad to hear thanks for watching see you in the next one